Welcome to another tutorial by Photographer Overnight. Now I've done a few scrapbooking tutorials in the past and as a photographer you might have thought these didn't apply to you at all. But today I wanted to show you why design skills will be really important when you're creating wedding albums for your clients. And we'll go over some of the basics of creating a layout for your albums. Being able to design your own albums could save you money because you'll be able to use any printer you want and just upload your totally custom page without having to worry about whether their software is going to have enough options. I'm going to show you that creating a page doesn't have to be time consuming by using a basic layout. So the first thing we're going to do is File, New, and we're going to make a 10 by 10 book. So 10 inches by 10 inches, always use 300 pixels per inch, RGB color, and I'm just gonna have a white background and hit OK. So here we have the first page, then I'm gonna hit File, New, and do the same thing to create our second page so that we have a two-page spread to work from. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is change this background color to black. I'm gonna use the Paint Bucket tool right here, and then to get the foreground and background colors black and white, just hit D. Then with the Paint tool selected, just click here. My background is black, and coming over here, and turning this one black too. Now I'm just going to create a simple layout by grabbing the box selection tool here and I'm going to create a box at the bottom. Just click, drag, and then let go. And we're going to create a new layer with this box. I'm going to switch the color to white and then shift F5 or edit fill will bring this box up. I'm going to use the foreground color which is white, hit OK, and we filled it in with white. Then control D to deselect the box. Now I'm going to create three boxes up here with the same selection tool. Click, drag, and let go. Then create a new layer by clicking this button here. Shift F5 will fill it in with white, and then Control D to deselect. Now with the arrow tool selected, I'll be able to move this box around. And what I'm going to do is duplicate the box by holding down Alt and then dragging. And you can see it created another layer for the box, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and drag again to create a third box. So now I have my layout for my page, I'm just going to grab some pictures to put in here. So here's my first picture, and in CS5 you'll get this transformation box right away. In older versions of Photoshop, you can just hit Ctrl T to bring up the transformation box. And now by holding down Shift, I can adjust the size of the box by clicking on the corner. If you don't hold down shift, you'll be distorting your image like this. So I get the picture the size I want it, and you always have to hit enter to commit that transformation and get rid of that transformation box before you can do anything else with your picture. With the arrow tool selected, I'll be able to move the picture around. Now I've got my picture on this layer right here, but I want it to be just above the layer with the big white box so that I can use it as a clipping mask. So I'm dragging this layer down here, and now that it's above the box, I can hold down Alt, click in between the layers, and now you can see it's being clipped to the box underneath. But now I need to make the image a little bit bigger so it completely fills the box. So by hitting Control T, the transformation box comes back, and holding down Shift so I don't distort the image, I can make it a little bigger. You can always move the picture around by nudging the arrows on the keyboard. Then always hit enter to commit that transformation. So now I'm going to grab three more pictures here. Holding down shift, I resize my picture, bring it above the box, then hit enter to commit that transformation. And now you can see my picture is hiding underneath the box layer. That's when you come over here, drag the layer up above the white box, then hold down Alt and click in between the layers to get your clipping mask. Now I can still move this picture around inside the mask. And I'm going to hit Ctrl T and get it a little bigger so it fills the box a little better. Then always hit Enter to get that transformation box off. Then we'll grab another picture and do the same thing. So now I have my pictures in my layout, I'm going to add some borders around these pictures. And to do that, you have to click the white box underneath the picture. And we're going to double click the layer, and you'll see this layer style box come up. And I'm going to come down to stroke, and then you can see the color's black, which isn't showing up. So I'm going to click on the color, 
change it to white, then hit OK. And I'm going to increase the size to 7 so I can see it a little better and hit OK. And now this picture is already pretty white so you can't really tell what's happening here. But now we're going to click the layer with the middle box, double click it, you'll bring up the style menu again, click on stroke, change the color by clicking there, click on the white box here, hit OK, then I'm going to hit 7, so it'll change it to 7 pixels and hit OK. Then we're going to come down to our last box, double click the layer, stroke, change the color, and then you have a border around your pictures. I'm going to do the same thing to the box on the bottom by double clicking and adding a stroke. So now I'm going to show you an easy way to just duplicate this layout by tweaking it a little bit that will save you a lot of time. What we're going to do is select all of the layers here by holding down shift, starting at the bottom, and then clicking at the layer on the top. You can see all the layers are selected. Now I'm just going to drag them over to the second document here. You can see that we've duplicated the document, but I'm actually going to flip this sideways by hitting Ctrl T. You see the transformation box come up. To zoom out, hit Ctrl minus so we can see what we're doing. And then coming out here, you'll see the arrows, which look like rotating arms. And holding down shift so you can rotate in perfect increments, you'll be able to rotate the entire box. Then I'm going to move this into place. When I have it where I want it, hit enter to commit the transformation. And now we're just going to go through and delete all of the pictures by clicking on the layer with the picture in it. If you want to do them all at once, hold down control. You'll be able to click separate layers. So we have our second picture here. Hold down control, click the next picture, and then we have all of the pictures selected and we just hit delete. And there's our second layout. I'm going to hit control plus so we get back to the same size as the other one. And now we'll drag in our pictures for this layout. So we drag in the pictures the same way as the other page. Then we've got to drag this picture down to the bottom layer where we have our big white box. Hold down Alt, and then we've clipped it to the mask. You can still drag the picture around until you have it where you want it. Then we'll do the same with all of these pictures on the side. And there you have a super easy layout for your wedding albums for your clients. In the Photographer Overnight program, you'll learn how to design wedding invitations for your clients as well as flyers and magnets to use in your advertising. You'll also learn the best places to get your wedding albums printed and how to get more wedding clients. Learn more at photographerovernight.com.